Our first game this morning is between the Florida Cobras and the Central Texas Avengers. The lineups for the Florida Cobras are Jason Lubin, number three. John Montez, number two. Tristan Brennan, number five. Hussam Atani, number six. Keegan Abner, number seven. And Jose Guidon Regis, number eight. With their coach, Keith Young. And for the Central Texas Avengers, we have Brandon Santos, number two. Xavier Renthas, number four. Mahavir Prakasha, number nine. And Nimananth Prakasha, number five. With their coaches, Beverly Jackson, Lisa King, Heather Gill, and Zach Arambula. And also coaching for Florida, Justin Keller. All right, testing the levels. Yeah, it's coming through okay, not in the red. Okay. It's the first game between the Florida Cobras and the Central Texas Avengers. Mike. Right. Can get my levels up in my cans. There we go. Cool, perfect. Central Texas starts. Roll down the middle is blocked. Goal. Goal. Florida's left wing rockets one across the top side for the first goal. 1 0, Florida.
High ball penalty on the Central Texas Avengers. Number nine to defend. And the penalty is blocked. Great job on the defense there, number nine. Slid across the left side, the block. Left wing, number seven, scores again. Good block there by number nine. Locked out. Score still still two zero Florida. Locked out. The right wing, number three. Central Texas looking to get on the board here. Great car cross roll, blocked by number seven. bounds. Good defense on both sides on that last rally. Number two for Central Texas. Breaker that one, the third goal for Florida, 3-0, just bounced off the center. Looks like we got a 10 second penalty here on Florida. Number five to defend for Florida. This is a good chance here for Central Texas to be on the board. by Florida, attacking the penalty there. Number five, the center. Number 
three from Florida, threw a rocket down the line, blocked out by Central Texas. Blocked out, Central Texas with the ball. out to the left. Florida with the ball. Ooh, that one was close. Blocked out on the right side. Central Texas with the ball. by number nine on Central Texas. Wow. Good last second effort there by number three on Florida. Still no score yet from the Central Texas side. That one was close though, and that was their best attempt so far. Backed out. Right winger, number nine, Central Texas. Another high ball penalty. Central Texas, number nine to defend again. Goal. There was no stopping that one. It's going 100 miles per hour straight down the line. Tough to stop. Just rolled over into the left corner there. Number seven from Florida scores his fourth goal of the game. All right, Central Texas takes a timeout. Try to rally up their team. It's been a tough start here. 5-0. Florida, the more experienced team. Definitely locking it down on defense. Not letting anything pass them. There was one close attempt. But uh, number three, the right defender really just kicked it out the last second. So not sure what uh, Coach Zach is going to say to his troops right now to rally him. But I think if they can just hang in there, get a couple of Goals before the half, I think they can really fight their way back into this one. Substitution number five comes in for number nine. He'll be on the right side for the Central Texas Avengers.
We're doing an equipment check right here for the new player number five from Central Texas, making sure the eye shades are on properly. And we'll be ready to start right now. Oh, that's got to be tough. A delayed game penalty for Central Texas. Number two to defend. They had a... It's not what you expect after a timeout, but let's see what happens here. Hopefully, number two can lock it down. Out of bounds. Put a little too much on it on Florida. And rolled it straight out to the right side. Great block by the center, number four. Substitution for Florida. It looks like uh, Central Texas has found their stride here. Great defense on that last rally. And the main leading goal scorer for Florida is going out. Number seven is out. And I believe number six is coming in. A minute 33 left in the first half. Goal, great roll there by Florida to the right wing. Number three with the cross roll. Found its way in the gap between the left and central defender of Central Texas, 6-0 Florida. Great line rolls there by number five, but Florida is all over him. Blocked out, Central Texas the ball. High ball penalty, that's the third one for Central Texas. Tough break there. Number two to defend. Out of bounds, the second time that's happened to uh, Florida on penalties. They could be up by two more points right here, but they haven't capitalized on. 45 seconds left in the first half. The score is still 6-0. Out of bounds on Central Texas, number five. Out. 
Out of bounds, 21 seconds left in the first half. Still 6-0 Florida. Threw a hammer right there in the right corner. Pass the defender. Central Texas, 7-0 with seven seconds left in the first half. Second penalty there by number five on Florida. Just as the buzzer going off, he got a high ball, so this could be a chance here for Central Texas to get on the board for the half. Blocked by Florida, and that'll end the first half with your score Florida seven, Central Texas zero. Saying there's still one second left on the clock. This will more of a formality at this point. <laughs> There's some technical issues with the timer there right before the half, but uh, the referees decide to take it upon themselves to call the last second. Good job there. So at the half, we have your score, Florida Cobras all over the Central Texas Avengers, seven to zero. And I believe, um, we have the, the goal ball rules. If a team is winning by 10 at any point in the game, it's considered a victory for that team. So you got to hope uh, Central Texas, they seem to have found their stride at the end there. They, after getting to a big gap 5-0 uh, in the first couple minutes, the last couple minutes they did a great job on defense and uh, didn't allow a lot of points. So uh, hopefully they can get off to a strong start in the second half and fight their way back into this one. I think Coach Sack, being a veteran himself, will have a couple of words of wisdom for them. Um, another minute and 15 seconds before we get you kicked off with second half action. Central Texas and Florida brings their players back on the floor. It looks like it's going to be the same lineup for Central Texas. On the left side, we got number five in the center, number four. And back on the right is number two. 
And same with Florida. They're going to start off with the team that they left the half with. With number six on the right side, number five in the center, and number three. Block there by number two of Central Texas, saving the goal. Goal! Number three of Florida, cross, cross roll, bounces its way over the central defender. And it is eight to zero, Florida. Substitution, Substitution by Florida. Out number five and in number two. They're gonna take out their center, number five. And in his place comes in number two. And they're going to switch the defense up a little bit. The uh, left wing is going to be in the center, and then number two is going to come in on the left wing. out. Great roll by number three, but the defense held firm for Central Texas. 8-0 stand. Timeout called by Florida. Looks like there might have been some communication issues there between the team passing the ball to each other. But when you're leading by eight points, there's nothing to worry about really. Five minutes and 44 seconds left in the half. And uh, let's see if the coaches for Central Texas can get their team going. The team's playing great, but sometimes when you're playing an opponent with more experience, there's only so much you can do.
goal down the left side. That's the substitute came in from Florida, number two. Just got it in the left corner there. Nine to zero, this could be it. All right. Central Texas with another substitution, hoping to get something going here. Number five is going out, taking his place is number nine. Florida switches out their center. Number six is going out for number eight. On that last play, we saw a nice bit of trickery there by Central Texas, but it wasn't enough to make it past that stingy Florida defense. Florida could end it here with this roll. Five minutes, 19 left in the second half. Score is nine to zero. on Florida, it goes over to Central Texas. Great cross roll by the right wing there of Central Texas, it's gonna be blocked out. Goal, there it is, number 10 for Florida. And that is game. There was no stopping that last one. But a valiant effort by Central Texas. They're really hanging on there for the last couple minutes. Florida wins the first game, 10 to zero. It's going to be 15 minutes before this next game, and we'll be back with more action.
Can the teams please come to their lines? The high ball line. This next game is between the Utah men's team versus the Mississippi Tigers. Starting for Utah, number three, Jacob Peterson. Number seven, Luis Alfredo Knight. And number six, Gabe Klinger. With their coaches, Tony Jetson and Martin Langworthy. Their opponents, the Mississippi Tigers, with number seven, Joaquin Thomas. Number 10, Jeremiah Hill. Number four, Torrance Peterson. Quintanus Shaw. We hear coach Tyler Griffin. game of today with uh, Utah versus Mississippi Tigers joined here upstairs with Zach who coached the first game four, four. hello 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 <laughs> so we, got, we got on the left what do we have we have Mississippi Tigers on our left and on the right we have Utah all right Utah is, is Utah newer to this tournament or they've been around for a while they came last time they hosted nationals in 2019 okay um, yeah they, they have a good program good program they, overall okay cool yeah they usually have some good Good players. Mississippi was also here uh, in 2019, so I'm interested to see um, what they've brought today. Yeah, yeah. Looks like they have a they've got a deep bench here. Mississippi. Yeah, I think that might be the issue for Utah not having any substitutes. So we'll see what happens if they can hold out. Nice. I know I usually get pretty tired after the two minute mark, but <laughs> these guys, these kids are younger, so they can probably you know. Young guns, you yeah. know. Yeah. Mississippi starting with the ball. seven to number seven on both rolls so, here. So center to center? Yep. Yeah, you want to try to get it to the wing. Center's usually the best defender. Ooh, good, good, yeah, good, good throw. Good block there, yeah. Good throw and block combination there. Number 10 for Mississippi. Oh. 
Ooh. There it is, mm. the first goal of the game. Nice. Utah, Utah strikes hot. Man. Right in the right corner. Perfect. I was going to say he's pushing that 10 second penalty, but he threw it must right in nine seconds and scored in that corner pocket. Yep. Okay, so it's. He went cross roll there. Yep. Left wing to right wing. And that one's rolled out. And now we're. You we're think they're. Yeah, you think they're testing the corners right now to see what they're made of? Yeah, they're going back to back cross rolls. Let's yeah. see if he goes back to it. Yep, he went. Oh, that was oh, center. Down the center again. Go! Oh, goal over the crossbar. I might have celebrated a little bit too early there. Hit the top of the crossbar and rolled in the goal for the second goal for Utah. Mississippi on the left side to start. Yeah, so typically when the when the balls when the balls popped up in the air like that hitting the crossbar, uh, you usually want to call loose yeah. or over or something. There was no communication by Mississippi, and they just had a pass out right now. Oh, so pass out. This is so they're gonna lose possession right there. This is tough. Mississippi with a shaky start. Yeah, it could be. Blocked out. Oh, I thought. Good, yeah. You know, I thought the slow and steady was going to win the race on that one, but I guess not. No. Out of bounds. Mississippi does have some power on their throws. Bounds again. Another cross roll from the left wing of Utah. Yeah, pass into the center. Let's see his stuff. Swept up by the center. Goal, oh. Utah again, 3-0. And that's going to get through that right side with the Mississippi defense. Yep. Finding that hole. Oh, good good line. Oh, there we go. That's what they needed. Good job. He knows it. Number 10 getting hype over there. Mississippi, Boy, Mississippi. getting that straight number on the yeah. board there. If I was Mississippi, I mean, I would oh. keep hitting that line, bro. We got a timeout here by Central Texas. Yeah, number 10, putting Mississippi on the board, three to one. That might be the shot in the arm that they needed to wake up and get back in this game, you know? You know, for, for sure. Let's see. Uh, I would like to see Mississippi maybe talk a little more on the court, communicate. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I would try that line roll again. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, tough, I think, with the – this is the first game, uh, the first game before, you know, we saw the inexperienced team. Usually it's hard to get them going against these more experienced teams. Exactly. But uh, what Mississippi has on their side is they got three people there on the bench. And so that's going to help out overall. Fresh bodies. Fresh bodies, exactly. See Utah does out of this timeout. Yeah. Oh, Utah requesting an eye shade check eye on shade Mississippi. Check. Yeah. They seem pretty uh, composed, though, overall, the Utah team. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is not their first rodeo. Is Utah. Ooh, right oh, under the. That's going to get through. Oh, Good setup out that's of That's tough. Yep. Right under the right elbow of the center there. Yeah. Four to one. Yeah, you kind of heard it. You heard yeah. it hit the close of the, of the Mississippi defender. Yeah. Do you ever blocked out? Do you ever put anything on your clothes? Like Velcro, is that illegal? It's not, not allowed? 
I mean, I tried. You tried, I tried not yeah. Like some Elmer's glue. Yeah. Go! Oh, Utah. another one. Utah pouring it on. Five to one. Three minutes fifty left in the first half. It's gonna be back to back goals. Let's see if Mississippi can get get yeah. one back here. Great roll there by number 10, blocked out. It seems like number 10 is their best throw. I'll yeah. try to be passing nope. him the ball a little more. Yeah, definitely. Ooh. Goal! The right wing overcommitted towards the center. That center, that was center who scored for Utah, correct? Yeah, center again, number three, he's the got, veteran. He's got a nice little smooth roll. He does. Yeah, has number three been playing for a while? I think so. Is that Jeremiah Hill? Could be. Out. Out of bounds. Utah with another chance to score here. That ball going straight Ooh. to center, bounces over. Nice recovered. Center. Center to center action there. Easy block for number three. Here comes their best throw, Utah. Oh, there we go. Nice. Number four, Mississippi holding down the line. Yeah, Utah's going to pass to the left one and see what he's got. He's going to line it up. Very good, good, okay. good communication. Yeah, they're they're some, getting there. There's some communication. They're starting to maybe settle in here. Uh, here comes the center for Utah. Oh, oh. Beautiful line roll. Great line roll. Good, good work there by the center of Utah. Sneaking his way down the left-hand side and just delivering a perfect line roll. I'm telling you, so the Utah team is experienced, and uh, you know they know where to hit their spots. Yep. Timeout, Mississippi. They've got to get the troops together, or we might see another 10-point game, mercy game here. We got seven to one. Two minutes, 19 seconds left. They've got the power, but it uh, looks like defense is king in this one. What do you think, Zach? Well, Utah, like I said, experienced team, yeah. and uh, their defense is going to be on point, just like how Florida's was, and. Um, Mississippi, like I said, just a little more communication. Defense is key. Yeah. But, you know, maybe Mississippi is just showing some Southern hospitality. It could be. It could be. Sure. Maybe that false sense of security, letting the, letting the other team get a giant lead, and then they come back from behind like Mighty Ducks. Exactly. All right. That, I can see that happening. The flying V. The flying V. <laughs> Never know. Well, they're they're definitely the younger team, but they, they have power on the roll. So a couple goals in a row here especially by number 10, could get them back in this game. Oh, no. And this, this is just oh, gonna a this surprising call here, delay of game. Yeah, it's going to come with the experience of Mississippi. Yeah. Ah. So wow, yeah. I thought there was uh okay. They're going to choose number four, Mississippi, to defend. Because on a penalty like that, uh, the other team gets to decide who defends. Yeah. And number four is the left wing. Left wing has actually played great. I don't think they've scored any on the left side yet. But uh, who knows? You know, usually the center is the more experienced defender. So they're taking their chances with the wing here. All right, let's see. Utah, cool and composed, ready to strike again. Well, you know, we're, we're going to see probably an accurate. Yeah. I'd be surprised if they don't throw it down the line. Let's see what happens here. Yep. Wow, that's precision. Was Loose that to the, the right side, straight down the line. Told you, there it is. Hit there in the corner. Corner pocket there. Number three again. It might be five goals for him, maybe six. And the score is 8-1 to one, Utah. Stat Two minutes, 19 left in the half. Filling in that stat sheet. Yeah. Uh, 
Mississippi having trouble finding their spots on the court. And again, what you said in your experience, this is, uh, this is what happens. And cross roll cross just roll, out. Yeah, had some power, just went out. Let's see this this uh, Utah player right here's been throwing down the line. See if he does again. No, he went cross roll. Great block there by number four. He's gonna pass it to the center. Great roll, but Number three from Utah was all over it. It's better defense. Ooh. Close. How about loose ball? Loose ball. Oh, oh, Mississippi that was lucky. Close, yep. That was good. He called loose. He called a little late, but he, they're starting to get their communication. Oh, good throw. Oh, tough break there. Mississippi almost cracked the Utah defense there with that roll. Great block by the center, blocked out. Strong roll from Utah. Yeah. Timeout by Utah. You gotta wonder if they're getting tired at this moment. You know, like. Uh, I mean, you're gonna see some fatigue on Utah since they're Yeah. Uh, no backups whatsoever. So you know, if you're. You're down for the count. That's it. They just got to leave you on there, right? You're just like road bumper. That's it. Speed bump, I think the kids call it nowadays. <laughs> so, um, yeah. What do you tell your team when you're down by seven? And, one, uh, one play at a time. One play, one play at a time, time, right? You just ignore the score kind of thing? Defense. Yeah, keep playing what you're playing. Um, yeah. If, if I was Mississippi, I would just say, you know, let's communicate on defense and let's just – Keep it simple right there. Yeah, that's good. Line, please. Line. Mm. Ooh, blocked Work. out. What's the score, Stan? It's still eight to one. Okay, so. 109 left in the first half. Number 10 here, trying to get Mississippi back. Oh, oh and that's there we go. Score. It's I, Tiger time. Eight to two, number ten. I Doing a little victory dance. I like that victory dance. Oh, okay. Having yeah. some fun on the court. I like it. Yeah. Goal! Oh, and Utah's gonna get it right back. They answered right away. Nine to two, 52 seconds left in the first half. Maybe holding that victory dance a little too long. Yeah. Well, you gotta enjoy it when you get your goals, yeah. Good defense there by Utah. Let's see if Mississippi can get to the second half here. Yeah. yeah. Rolled out. 28 seconds left in the first half. Another out ball back over to Mississippi. Number four to throw. He's got to release it quick here. Oh, that's going to be half. 15 seconds left. Blocked Good out. Throw. Good throw, just better defense. Yeah. Seven seconds left. Oh, and he knew it. He knew it. Oh, good defense good by block. Mississippi. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I That'll do it for the first half. I think you're right, man. I think, uh, you know, that left wing for Mississippi is probably the, one of the stronger defenders. And yeah. then on the, on the other side, on the other wing for Mississippi, that's their best offensive player. Yeah, he's the lines are really holding down their own. And uh, while the center is playing great, they just found a way to get past him. Yeah. So that gives you your score at the end of the first half. Utah 9, Mississippi 2. And the coach trying to rally the troops down there. 
and Utah looks like they're just coasting. Uh, so there's five men teams, right? Yeah, five men teams, and we. Okay. So we're now we've now seen four. four we've of seen the five. four of them, huh? And it looks promising. If you had to go just by scores, it seems like the more experienced teams might be Florida and Utah. I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. We, we still haven't seen the other Texas teams, so. Um, yeah, pro I, I heard good things about them. I have heard good things. Yeah. What's uh, Mississippi's uh, colors? They're kind of rocking the white and black. Traditionally, they usually have a white and blue motif for Scasby, but uh, the jersey's looking sharp there, white and black, and a Utah with the red and black. Okay. It's also the same colors as the Central Texas Avengers, so, you know, they can might, might be able to swap jerseys there if they need go. to in a pinch, you know. Okay. One tears or you get, like, uh, mustard on it or something, just switch them out. Exactly. No problem. I know it's Chick Fil A at lunch, so if you know. You oh yeah, play, yeah. Also, you know, Round Rock players in. Never know. Shout out to Chick Fil A. They did not pay for that sponsorship. So, thanks for nothing, Chick Fil A. Yeah. We. Are <laughs> not doing product placement yet. All right, 55 seconds before the start of the second half. Referees here are checking out the uh, the eye shades, eye shade making check. sure there's no nobody's uh, taking any liberties, no no snacks behind the eye shades, no. What else are they looking for behind those eye shades? And sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes people they, uh, they try to study. So study, they'll have, yeah. They'll have their homework in there, or maybe some their kind eye of, shades. yeah. Is it like TSA? You can't carry like you know liquids behind the guy's shades or anything like that, or? There has been people known of uh, carrying some down. hydro flask in the shades. Hydro, well, that's it. But uh, you got to think with this kind of score, are we gonna see another another ten minute mercy a ten point mercy game, or will uh, Mississippi? Let's look. It looks like Mississippi did make a substitution during the half. The uh, <laughs> On the left side, they've substituted somebody. We got number six coming in, Utah, still with their same and only three players. But they gotta feel confident with the nine to two lead. So you're saying that the Utah did not sub anybody? They did not sub. So for COVID protocol, they're staying on the same sides. Yeah. So they're taking out their better defender. Yeah. Put in number six. Let's see what he has. He might be the secret weapon here. You don't know. This is this is when I would put him in. Let's see. Goal! Boy, Utah's gonna score right like, away. Not wasting any time, ten to two. Utah. Utah's now two points away from uh yeah. Get into a 10 point mercy. Let's see if Mississippi can get one on the board. Oh, decent roll there by the new player, Mississippi, number six, but Utah all over it again. Good block by center. That 10 second clock is going. He needs to throw it. Nice. Good awareness by Mississippi. Yeah. Man, that uh, that left wing of Utah throws a pretty quiet ball. Yeah, it's not fast, but you know, silent but deadly. Yeah. <laughs> and they're attacking the middle again. Good, good, good defense yeah. by Mississippi. All right, Mississippi wasting no time getting it to number ten. Goal! There it Goal, is. There it is. Actually, it was a little fake by number seven. With a little run play option, break the handoff to number 10 did it himself. 10 to 3, so they're still back in this. Nice, so Center actually passed it to, the, to number 10. No, he held on to it. He looked like he was going to oh, pass okay. it. Oh, okay. A little yeah. trickery. A little trickery. Oh. 
think oil. Miss Sickle pulling out the bag of tricks. Yeah, bag of tricks bounced it, but rolled it straight out to the right side. Right, Utah saying tricks are for kids. He wasn't having it. Great block there by the new player, number six. Powerful line roll by Utah. He was all over it. Center passing the right. Right go. to the Mississippi Center. Good throw by the wow. center. Wow. Ooh, hammer down there. Blocked out by the center of Utah, oh, number three. I thought I could see some more of that from yeah. the center of Mississippi. I see right wing of Utah is going to get a throw here. I think uh, Mississippi is finding their stride here, gaining more confidence. There we go, for, number 10. For sure. He could get goal number four here. Another, oh. Another good roll by Mississippi, number 10. Yeah. Center all over it again. Ooh. Here comes Utah center. Blocked off the right side and oh. in for a goal. Oh, tough break there, 11 to three. So still that communication uh, yeah. on Mississippi, you know, calling that loose ball. It's key, you gotta do that at this point of the game. And just when he thought Utah was showing signs of fatigue, you know. Utah stays ready. Yeah, they're just two points away from shutting this thing down. It just seems like when Mississippi tries to close the gap, Utah answers back. No! Oh, oh, not so fast, 11 to four, right Mississippi. I mean, you, you, you gotta respect the Time fight out. from Mississippi. Yeah, oh, I got it, I love it. I love the competitiveness of this game. And they're, they're getting there. Look, they're, this team is like uh, gaining experience just during this game, it oh, feels yeah. like. And they're, they shook off those you know, early morning jitters. Maybe the coffee's starting to kick in. Yeah. The cookies they had for breakfast, or <laughs> I had for breakfast, starting to kick in. And uh, yeah, it's just good stuff here. And from what I thought was we were going to have a short second half, this could go the distance. Yeah, how much time is left here in the second half? Four minutes and 11 seconds, and the score is 11 to four. So I don't think we're going to see a mercy after all here. No, I don't think so. I think no. Mississippi is uh, definitely tightened it up. And, you know, it could be, uh, could be getting tired, Utah. They've got less subs than a subway gas station. Or a gas station subway? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good block. Mississippi number 10. That right wing. He's going to go down the line. Locked out, number 10. Striking again, but swept up by Utah. Good cross roll. Center eats it up. Nice. Pass it off to the right wing. Goal! Oh, there we go. It's nice. Tiger time. Good line roll again from number 10 on Mississippi. 11 to 5. There's still time, three minutes left in this game. Mississippi trying to claw back here. Oh. Oof. I'm telling you, that, that left wing of Utah, that ball, I don't, I don't know what it is. I think he put some baby oil on it. It could be, yeah, it could be. Blocked out by Utah. Good block. Block, it might have went over the line. I think the line judge must have missed it. 
We are. Oh, I think you might have. Uh, yeah. You might get called if you didn't check on it. I, I think I saw it came nice. over, but you know. Yeah. So they went into the booth. They said no, it didn't no. cross the line. Blocked there again by Utah. The center sweeps it up. Off to Ricochet. Oh, what is could take a little bit something off that roll there, so you could be getting tired. Two minutes twenty left. That was number ten. When you're up by this much towards the end, is there anything you can do to really you can't really eat the time, right? Like uh, eat the clock. Well, when the ball comes to your side, you have ten seconds. Oh, Utah's Goal! in a score. Utah again, twelve to five, seven point lead here with two minutes left to go. So when the ball enters, and once the ball hits one of the bodies of your team, yeah. uh, you have ten seconds, so you can milk that ten seconds as much as you want. Yeah. And if you really, really want to do it. Um, you can kind of like barely push the ball across court and is, eat a lot of the time. Is that like uh, considered? Is that considered strategy or? Yeah. Is it kind of like not the cool thing to do? It's not the cool thing gotcha. to do. Especially on here, you know, you're you're up. Yeah. You know, play we're gonna play this game. Oh, oh another and Mississippi one. again. Tigers, right on it. Twelve to six. Chop the lead in half. You know, it's just, it's just been that kind of game, kind of seesaw. Yeah. It's you know score. what? I mean, yeah, if actually the second half, I can't remember the score at the end of the first half. I think it was 8-2 to two or was, something like it that. It was 9-2. 9-2. to two, Look yeah. at this. So if you could, you know, if you take away a small victory here, um, Mississippi's winning the second half. For sure. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty impressive here. I remember I, I, I come corrected. I mean, I, I, really I was ready to write them off. Yeah. 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 I was. Yeah. They're over here fighting back, playing better defense, and throwing more accurate. Yeah, we could see more from this Mississippi team in the second game if they can keep up this momentum. I would like to see that uh, center from Mississippi throw a little more. Ref asking them to uh, cheer on the inside. Uh, Good block by the center of Mississippi. Uh, I mean, that throw was good. If he could uh, be able to move to a wing and throw that ball, yeah, I think he might be able to hit some, some more gaps. Yep. Oh. Nice bounce roll there. Less than a minute to go, 12 to 6 Utah. So right now Mississippi, they want to try to like uh, throw as fast as they can right now. They're, they're working against the clock. Yeah. You know what they could, uh, they could be working towards the goal differential. Because remember the tiebreakers here, if you have the same record, we're looking for goal differential. Okay, that will play a factor. Could be, especially with just five teams. Utah sitting nice in the... Uh, Front seat. They're, they're going to be wanting yeah. to wanna take in their time on the throws, using up that 10 seconds. Yeah, 28 seconds here. It could just be a couple more throws. Yep, taking his time. That, oh, that quiet ball, man, I'm telling you, it's quiet. That is super quiet. Get that ball a job at the library. <laughs> Ooh, blocked out there. Eight seconds left. This is... So you Utah, Utah could probably hold it here. Yeah. But I would just probably good sportsmanship. They'll probably throw it. Yep. Yep. Oh. Oh, and Utah's in a score. 13. Unlucky 13 there for Mississippi. 13 to 6. Two seconds left. But you know what? Good game by Mississippi. Great game. And hopefully they're cheering on the inside because uh, they did a great job in the second half. They pretty much. They won the second half by one goal, I believe. 
Utah scored four in the second half. Well, they tied it in the second half, actually. Mississippi scored four, Utah scored four. So if they can carry that kind of momentum into the next uh, game, Mississippi could be one to look out for in this tournament. Yeah, so after these two games, I would really like to, uh, games coming up. I'd like to see Mississippi play the Texas Avengers. Yeah. And then I'd really like to see Florida play Utah. I feel like those are oh. some good games. Yeah, it's going to be action-packed right here. Utah. It's Good sportsmanship there by the teams, acknowledging each other. Coming away with a W. Yep. Like I said, experienced program. They're going to they'll probably go far in this tournament. I think so. I think so. What's uh, what's their mascot? Utah what? You know what? That was a surprise. I think they used to be called the Utah Havoc. Utah Havoc. But I, they don't have a team name listed on the sheet here. So maybe they had one of those problematic team names that they couldn't, you know, use kind of like uh the washington redskins or the kansas city chiefs kind of thing but maybe maybe i don't think so maybe it was just the utah men's team they could be you know coming up with some kind of new cool name i don't know or it could be the utah havoc and we just uh don't have it on the piece of paper yeah i'm gonna try to go get a roster so we yeah start calling these, these just calling names. these guys by their names yeah. instead of their numbers but gotta give it up uh number seven the top leading goal scorers so far after two games Number seven in Mississippi, dropping well over five against Central Texas and Utah. Number three, the center, I think put up about 10 in that game. So, up some not bad, yeah. What do we have next? Next, we have our first, uh, our first uh, girls game, and I believe that we're going to have, uh, it looks like our first time to see Texas in action. Could be Texas versus Florida. Yeah, here we go. It is the Florida Cobras versus the Texas Wildcats. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll be able to see our uh, our Texas girls. Yeah. For those who don't know, me and Stan work here at the Texas School for the Blind. Yep. So Zach, a former uh, goalball extraordinaire player, and I uh, played a little goalball myself. You know, I don't know if they give prizes for. Uh, blocking the ball with your face, but if they did, I definitely probably would have gotten a trophy or two. Or for most bruises? Most bruises, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's looking promising here. Um, both these teams appear to be on the younger side for the uh, Florida and uh, Texas team. Oh, uh, do you have the ages or, or just going by? I'm just eyeballing here, but- The eye test. Eye test. You know, if I had to guess, yeah, they're, more of a middle school type uh, game here compared to, I think Utah had somebody who was like 35. Is that too old to play? Well, if I had to guess an age, yeah. that they're, they're probably youth. Youth, yeah, youth. No, they're, I mean, it just seems like the, the guys' teams seem more in the high school range and the girls' team are probably still, they could be in high school or late middle school. Not sure yet, it's, it's hard to tell from up here, you know, we're just taking guesses. Well, who knows? There might be a 35-year-old out there. Yeah. Well, there's a... Oh, wow, there's a dog on the on the sidelines there. It's a guy dog. Is that illegal to have a dog play defense? Is that not allowed? That's not allowed, right? Probably not, no. Okay. Even if they have the shades on? I think so. Okay. Well, just checking, just checking for the people, so. for the viewers back home. You know, breaking down some of the, the rules. Can't have a dog on the court. Uh, 10 second penalties, the high ball line also into effect. We've had a couple of high ball penalties in the first game. Not too many penalties in the second game, though. So No, they had, they had one delayed game on the uh, on Mississippi, just not getting back into their um, their bench box in time. Yeah. And then other than that, it was a pretty clean game. Yeah. Well, it looks like the uh, benches are full for both teams here. This is good. Is that fatigue's not going to be a factor here. Florida and Texas both have plenty of players on their team. So, so again, Florida with the highly experienced program. Yeah. Uh, their girls have probably been playing together for about three, three years, three plus years. Yeah. A um, little insight on the Texas girls team. You know, a lot of these girls first time playing. Yeah. So, it's going to be a really good experience for them. Uh, 
just being able to be in that real tournament, real game. It's it's great to have the ch opportunity though, because you gotta think with the COVID, I think uh, you know, kind of shutting down tournaments for a while. It's great to see them back in action, back on the court. They got a uh, they got Mark down there, Tammy and Libby, offering advice. And I know you work with them also sometimes in the practices, right? Yeah, when they would have practices here at the school, I was always there trying to trying to help out for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Texas does have uh, one player from Round Rock uh, because they couldn't fill up a, a girls team. So uh, the Texas team actually drafted her for the team. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, Good, I think she, uh, I think collaboration. Be, yeah, I think she'd be playing center. Okay. All right, we'll be back with the... Uh, Next game action here in about six minutes.
We, uh, for our next game, we have the uh, Florida Cobras versus the Texas Wildcats. For the Florida Cobras, we have number seven, Natalie Cruz. Number eight, Dijanae Levers. Number five, Sophia Lopez. Number three, Alexis Ray. Number one, Jasmine Camacho Regis. And they're coached by Katrina Desu and Donna Johnson. And for the Texas Wildcats, we have number two, Heather Dickey. Number six, Miriam Larson. Number four, Jasmine Kittle. Number nine, Jessica Bush. And number three, Wealthy Bundage. With their coaches, Mark Grunquist, Tammy Reed, and Libby Doherty. some of those, maybe they could get a copy or something. Yeah. All right, here we are. Third game of today. We got Texas on the right side, Florida on the left. Looking at uh, Florida warming up, she had some, they had some nice throws, so. Texas is gonna have to be ready defensively. Yeah. Six. So that, that that left wing of Florida really pushing that high ball line. The communication on Florida is already on point. Wow, great, Good. great block there by the center. Blocked it out to the right hand side. Good defense. are all blocked by Florida. Center facilitating the ball to her wings very nicely. Solid defense at the beginning here. After one minute, no goals. Ooh, we got a ponytail stuck in the goal. Ouch. I can honestly say that's never happened to me, Zach. The goal monster. The goal monster gets everybody. But uh, we do have three. For the women's side of this tournament, we have three teams, and these are two of them. So Mississippi Tigers get a chance to kind of scout out their competition. Right wing with the cross roll blocked by Florida. 
Four deck quickly passes it over to the right wing. Good roll blocked by center from Texas. Uh, so center's gonna be, the center for Texas is gonna be the most experienced player they have. Yeah. She's gonna be all over the court today. Great job there. Way to call loose, good loose, communication. Yeah. I believe the center for Texas, her name is Marion. That sounds about right. And that is the round rock player I was talking about. Here comes that left wing for Florida. Oof, great roll like, swept you know, right up. You see what I mean, Stan? Yeah. Like she runs all the way up to that high ball line, using up all that space. But she's doing a good job of releasing it low, so she's you know. Oh yeah. Not, not getting any penalties she, that way. She, def she definitely knows what she's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Lord is still attacking the center. No luck there. Pushing that 10 seconds. Oh, very close. Goal oh. off the right wing of Texas. That was tough. Looked like the center overcommitted to the left. Florida's all there by Florida. Florida's Jumping gonna, on the board, yeah. Yep. Yeah, Florida's really pushing that 10 seconds. I'm surprised it wasn't. But they're going to get a goal instead. Ooh. Good roll by the right wing of Texas, blocked by the center of Florida. Good defense by Texas. Yeah. Re really relying on their uh, left wing there, Florida. For offense? Mm hmm. Ooh. Locked out. She's putting some real, yeah. Putting some mustard behind those rolls. I think it's going to be the first time we see the left wing for Texas throw here. I believe so. Nice quiet throw, yeah. cross roll. Just out. Here comes a strong door for Florida. Goal. Yeah, there it goes. She's going to score down the well line. Well done. Down the line. And it was interesting there. She was running down the out bounds. She was out of bounds while running, but the ball was in bounds, so it still counts. Oh, really? Yeah. There she goes again. Oh, a few. That's, that looked like a high ball to me. I'm surprised that wasn't called. And you know what? A few, a few noises going on in the gym, and Texas still being able to defend. Yeah. yeah that, that strong throw from floor is going to get another try here. She's going to push that high ball line. There we go. Texas Swept holding up there strong. Wealthy, really locking it down the right side. Well, we're going to have to have a timeout here for a blindfold check. The ball bounced up and uh, dislodged the blindfold from the center of Texas. I'm not Texas, Florida. She appears to be okay. Referee's checking out the... Yeah, oh, we might have a, a substitution here. I'm not sure. Yeah, just readjusting her uh, blindfold, and it looks like she's ready to stay in the game. Uh, speaking from experience of having the ball hit me in the face many times playing goal ball, I know it does sting a bit, but... A little stinger. Yeah, it clears up the sinuses. Oh, good defense. Blocked by the center of Texas. Mm -hmm. Substitution by Florida. All right, they're taking out the center, making sure she's okay. This could be a good chance for uh, Texas to get on the board here, maybe yeah. test. Uh, would you test the center? You test the newbies coming in, or? Well, I mean, 
You're not really testing a player. You want to test gaps. So gaps. So yeah. center. If sh- is that new player going to center? Yes. Okay. So you know you want you want to hit your gaps between the center and wings. Mm-hmm. And you know yeah you do want to see what she got. Yeah. But ball's gonna come in on the left side of Florida, so yeah. they're, they're strong thrower. Great block. Texas all over it. Both the Florida goals scored by the wings. Cross roll there just barely went out. Yeah, here's their strong thrower again. But Texas center up to the yeah. up for the task. She's gonna fire back. Fires back straight down the center. Oh, looks like the new center knows what they're doing as well. We could have a Good low job. scoring game here. Both defenses really showing composure. Good flow to the game though. The ball oh. the ball staying in most for most part. Yeah. And uh just some good defense. Ooh, close nice. one there, yeah. Timeout, Florida. And I don't. I'm, yeah, a minute 21 left in the half. What do you say to a Texas? Just down by two. It's looking good. Um, if I was Texas, I mean, their defense is doing pretty well. I mean, the score is 1-0, correct? 2-0. Uh, oh, 2-0. Oh, two two zero. Zero, yeah. I would, uh, you know, I would say probably like the past five throws have gone to their strongest thrower of Florida. So I would, if I was Texas, I would tell them to try to throw to that left wing of Florida's, keep it away from their better thrower. Mm -hmm. Other than that, man, I mean, you know, it's kind of the, the old saying, don't fix it if it ain't broke. Exactly, exactly. I think this game is going the distance, so I think the substitutes are going to play a big role in this one. Uh, looks like there is... Ooh, that's going to be a difficult uh, blow to Florida there. Number eight appears to have had hey, some eight. kind of hand issue. Hopefully and she's okay, but she is being taken out right now, and number five is being put in her place. What wing was that? That was the left wing. That was the offensive firepower oh. for Florida. So this could change the whole dynamic of the game. Yeah, well, then I take back what I said from Texas. Uh, Texas can, you know, the whole court's open. Yeah. The whole court's open, and it looks like, yeah. Texas is sticking with their lineup. No substitutions being made on that side. Number five in for Florida. See where Texas goes. Oh, Straight back down the middle. Blocked by the center. Center's gonna facilitate it's at left wing. Down the center again. Less than uh, 45 seconds left in the first half. Florida's right wing looking to add another point to the board. Ooh, blocked out. Whoa. Hard roll, hard roll. Stopped over there by the center. Blocked good, out to yeah, the right. Good job by the center to get a hand on it or get a body part on it. Yeah. Get it out of bounds. Good throw by Welpy. Welpy, good job. 
Forward with the c communication. Twelve seconds left. This could be the final that throw. Ten second penalty. She gets rid of it. And that's gonna do it. Florida with ball. Two seconds left. Oof. I'm gonna grab my jacket. Yep. Close first half there. Uh, Texas really holding their own against a more experienced Florida team. Two to two to zero is a score. So this one I think is definitely going the distance. We'll be back with more action right after the half. Let's see. Let's see what adjustments they did. Yeah. Looks like Texas is coming out with the same lineup, and uh, yeah, same with Florida. So no changes during the half. Ten seconds here before the start. So we're looking at the court from a different uh, side. So for us and the viewers, I'm pretty sure Texas on our right and Florida on the left. That's right. And we're back here a second at action with uh, me, Stan, and Zach over here. Oh. Oh, another rollout. Here's the left wing of Texas. Just out when you score this close. I mean, it's anybody's game, just a goal or two. Oh, good there smooth go. roll. Blocked by the center. Welpy picks it up on the right hand side and it's going to chuck it right back. Just can't get past that stingy Florida defense, also shown by the guys' team. Oh, oh, 
Number one from Florida, picking up her second goal of the evening. Three to zero, Florida. That was a hard throw in the gap. Very missed by Texas, 3-0. Blocked by Senator of Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the Senator for Texas is probably their better thrower. You, I would like to see her maybe throw from a wing every now and then. Yeah, yeah, you have to kind of, I think she might be following your advice here. Kind of, she's attacking more of the sides. Oh, that center from Florida is all over it, though. Stretches out to block that one. Blocked out by Wealthy. <coughs> Good defense there. I'm surprised. Yeah, this this right wing on Florida is pretty loud in her throw. I'm surprised she needs to be careful. Uh, they might call a noise penalty. Center pass in the left wing here. Oh, we found out. So Sofia Lopez is on that fo on that left wing. Uh oh, we ten got ten seconds. Ten seconds. That did take a while. This great opportunity here for Texas to get right back in this. Texas seemed like they had somebody in mind to defend. Strange, they're choosing five. Who was the initial uh, center? I think I would have chosen maybe one of the wings. But who knows? Maybe they, I, they know this team, they scout them out, and they're thinking they've got the best chance to score against number five. I agree. I'm pretty sure the center for Texas is going to get the throw. Let's see if she sets up on a wing. I hope so. Where is she set up now? She's set up on the uh, right-hand side. Okay, so she is in the wing? Yes. Okay, I see it. It's a big opportunity. She's going to throw. She goes down the line. Yeah, right That's in the pocket. Score Texas, Texas is on the board. And you can hear it, that home, the home crowd letting them know they appreciate it. Three to one. That's big for Texas to see if they can build on that. That's huge. There's still plenty of time. Four minutes, 49 seconds left in the first, second half. Oh, and Florida, just like they do, they're going to come back and yep. get those scores right back. That's why they call them Cobras, Zach because they strike back. Right. Out of bounds, Florida with the ball. The right wing has it. Blocked out, good yeah, job yeah. there by Heather on their <laughs> wing. Yeah, that wing has that strong, big stomp when she throws. Uh-oh. Heather with the throw, she's going to go cross court, and it's going to go just out. Just a little bit to the right. Probably <coughs> has to hold on to it just a little bit longer. Get that roll more towards the center. Nice, smooth block. Smooth block. I think we have Jasmine on the right wing here. Blocked by center. Oh. Florida. It looks like they're trying to bring back. Oh, maybe not. Oh. Uh oh. So yeah, eight is coming back in. Eight the one is coming back that in. Had the medical injury earlier. Well, it's good to know she's okay. I I don't know if she's coming back. Actually, we're gonna see number three. It looks like. Oh okay. Number eight did stand up. I don't know. They're probably checking with her to see if uh, she's ready to go back in. We'll, maybe they we'll called find for out. The, yeah. Maybe they called for the real slim shady to stand oh, up. The real <laughs> <laughs> <With> the <laughs> yeah yeah. 
I think some people in the t early 2000s will get that reference. For the, <laughs> for the younger kids uh, nowadays, that was uh, M&M's, Alter Ego, Slim Shady. So we will see number eight back in the game, and that is good news for Florida, bad news for Texas. Also coming in for Florida is number three on the right side. Her first time seeing an action in this game. Center going out to the middle of the court to get the blues ball. She's gonna pass it to the right wing and she gets rid of it nice and quick. You know that. Oh, oh wow. Close, close, living on the edge there, Texas. What a, what a sequence of events right there would have happened. You know. Fingertips, Heather almost got a goal there. The uh, right wing overcommitted, but the center saved it. Man, the Rolled center, out. the center for Florida has some experience <laughs> under her belt for sure. A couple plays ago, when uh, the ball was blocked, the ball went into the middle of the court. She ran out, grabbed it, passed it to one of her teammates, and let her know like you have to get rid of it. Yeah. To not get that 10 second penalty. Yeah. Definitely, they, uh, they're a team that's just playing textbook goal ball here. Not making any mistakes, kind of relying on the wings to do the, the bulk of the scoring. And Texas is doing a great job too, just might not have enough offensive firepower to get past this Florida wall. So I figured out two names of, oh no, well they took someone out. No, so took someone out, I think uh, Jasmine is out and number number three Play. took her spot. Play. And on for Texas, you have Miriam Center. Locked out. Locked out. Well, they followed your advice on that one, Zach. The center moved across the court to throw that. Nice. Yeah, they set that up out of a timeout. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get it. Wealthy again with the solid defense. Equipment check on Florida. Equipment check there. That also another close high ball line. Like you said, she's really going to the edge there. Yeah. But with that technique, I mean, once she releases the ball, it's on the ground. There's no no hovering, no nothing. That ball yeah. is straight down, straight across the court. And it's been giving uh, Texas problems. But so far, they've been able to handle it in the second half here. I believe only scoring one in the second half. Oh, good throw. Oh. Goes left wing for Florida. You can get a throw here. Fast oh, roll. Good. good job. Good reaction time there. Fat. Another fast roll by good number eight of Florida. Good offense is better defense. Mm -hmm. Wealthy. Blocked by the center. Heather for Texas to get a throw here. Yeah. No oh, timeout. Coach Tammy Reed taking a timeout with how much time left on the clock? It's a minute 50. There's still time to get back in this game. They're only down by three, four to one. And, and Stan, there's no uh, three pointers in this game, is there? No three pointers that I know of, Zach. But, uh, you know, I mean, a couple of goals here and there. I, if I were Texas, I'd really try to avoid the center on these rolls and uh, try to get back in this game just by hitting the corners. Yeah, maybe try to hit those corners, those lines, the gaps. Yeah. I'm wondering if it's time for Texas maybe to try a substitute. I don't know, you know, if they're playing the long game of maintaining a good goal differential or maybe bringing some offensive firepower at, off the bench but at the expense of defense. I don't know. I don't know what's yeah. the right call. Well, well, you don't want to question the mastermind of Mark Grunquist, the longtime coach for the Texas team. Blocked by the center of Florida. 
The right wing here is going to get a chance. What the throw? Oh, oh. loose by sensor. Oh. Hi. Again. Yeah, you were talking about communication. Just didn't call loose on that one. That that could have done it. Here we go, I think. And here comes here comes the subs. This, you know, that right. was that was a really blockable ball, man. I, yeah. Maybe just so like a They could be showing signs of fatigue here. Especially with a minute 32 to go, that could be the one that puts this game away. Five to one for Florida. All right, number four coming in for Texas. Taking Heather's place and hopefully might spark up the offense here. Oh, the center for Texas is going to score. Goal. That's the right spot. Finally hitting a gap. Right there. The right gap. Was, was that Five a, to two. Was that a gap or was that in the corner? Stand? In the corner. Oh, corner gap. Oh, good. Here goes Texas Jasmine now in the game for Texas. She goes down Great the line. Great line roll, almost made it, blocked out. She goes right wing for Florida. Blocked by Jasmine. Oh, Loose ball, but goal. goal. Again, they gotta communicate that six to two with under a minute to go. Center for Texas going right uh -oh, at the center. Oh, we almost had a, oh. we had a mini collision there between yeah. the Florida players. That was a close one, but they Fly, held their ground. There's a left wing for Florida. Oh, strong Great throw, but good defense. Wealthy right on that, no problem for her. Down the center. And with 10 seconds left, it could be all that she yeah, wrote. And a lot of times, accuracy is tough for uh, younger players. And it's just showing right there. Could, a lot of balls going to uh, center of floor where they're part of their defense is. Yeah. And that'll do it. Florida Cobras ahead and defeat the Texas Wildcats 6-2. to two. Hey, um, You know, congratulations to Florida yeah. showing uh, how good of a program they are, both for their men and girls team dominating. Yeah. Uh, but good for Texas, you know, a couple first-year players. I thought they, they played well. Really well. Uh, you know, they were right in it the majority of the game. So it's just uh, hopefully in their second game finding a little more offensive firepower or maybe trying some trick plays or really hitting the corners there and the gaps, like you said. Yeah. Could help out in this case. Who do we have next? Our, our next game coming up, we, we are going to have the uh, Central Texas Avengers versus Utah. Wow. The men's, the yeah. Avengers having a tough schedule coming in out the gate, playing the top two teams in this tournament. What can you do? It's the way it is. But, you know, it's, it yeah. could be a learning experience for the Central Texas Avengers. Uh, you know, they do have almost that home court advantage. They didn't travel very far to get here. It's about uh, 20 miles up the freeway from uh, the tournament, so not too bad for them. No, and, and, you know, I've, uh, over the maybe the past month, I've been working with them, helping coach that team. Nice. And, uh, have you been have, up, yeah, have you been up to Round Rock to help coach them out? Have you tried those Round Rock donuts? I have not. I have not, but I, actually, they travel, they practice here. 
Oh, they practice here. Well, even better. Yeah, so yeah. They, they know this court. That, so that's they gotta do. help. Yeah. They know the court. That's good. I want to give a shout out to our superintendent Emily Coleman for uh, just allowing this tournament to happen. It's great giving these kids a chance to experience the first tournament for yeah. most of them. Yeah. I know for this uh, Round Rock team, two of the players are new, like uh, first-year players. So yeah, that's always good. And at the 11 o'clock hour here, we're also letting people, viewers on campus, know that we are having lunch in uh, Building 603. For any students on campus who want to grab a bite to eat, uh, lunch will be being served from 11 to 12.45. All right, we'll be back with you after the, this little break with the uh, fourth game of the tournament.
Central Texas Avengers and Utah. First up for the Central Texas Avengers, number two, Brandon Santos. Number nine, Mahavir Prakasha. Number four, Xavier Renthas. And number five, Nenima Prakasha. Sorry, if I said your name wrong, let me know later on. All right. Uh, and for Utah, number three, Jacob Peterson. Number seven, Luis Alfredo Knight. And number six, Gabe Klinger. The coaches for Central Texas Avengers are Beverly Jackson, Lisa King, and Heather Gill. And Utah, coached by Tony Jepson and Martin Langworthy. The referees are checking the eye shades here for game number four between the uh, Central Texas Avengers on our left, or actually on our right, Central Texas Avengers versus Utah on our left. Utah with an impressive victory just a couple games ago over the Mississippi Tigers. Got to be wondering with just a one game break if they'll end no subs, will they be tired for this game? I don't think so. They're young and ready to go. Ready to go. Nice. And uh, you were coaching the Central Texas Avengers earlier. Is there any kind of advice or strategy you would give them against this team? Or is uh, this? No, just keep, you know, play their game. You know, play, their game, yeah. play, uh, play sound defense, get back to your spots and communicate. You know, when that first game, you know, Florida is a good team. Yeah. And, uh, they were patched. Yeah. And so maybe that played a little factor, but you know, just a little nerves. And so they weren't communicating as much, but let's see if they, they correct that. I think they will. Okay. I think they will play a lot better this game, score a little more goals. Yeah. I expect a lot closer game. And Central Texas starts with the ball in the center. Look at that, just Woo! like that, they take the early lead, Central Texas. There it is. I with the goal, center, number four, hit the right gap. Great block there by number nine, a little shoelace block there, kicking it out of bounds. So these, these Avengers have really good quarter awareness. Down the line? Down the line, wow, I mean, Central Texas. Really showing a lot of fight here in the beginning. I'm telling you, son, this is a really good team. It's just that yeah. their first game, they, they played a better team. Yeah. You no, know, Utah going out in the middle of the court. Oh, p good pass to his uh, left wing. He's going to get rid of it. Ooh, 
good bounce roll scooped up okay. by Utah Center. Yeah, so it looks like you have Javier on the left side for uh, uh, Avengers. Better communication for the Avengers. Mm -hmm. Calling loose right away. Mm -hmm. Oh, rolled out to the right side. Stop by number nine. Oh, no. this is what hurt Texas Avengers in their first game, getting those high ball penalties. Yep. I think I, I believe they had three in that first game. Yeah. Um. So here we go. Let's see if they can. I think they blocked two out of the three. Oh, the, the Texas bench not telling them where the ball is. Here we go. He goes down the line. Blocked! Blocked! Wow! Did not expect that. Great defense for Great uh, defense. I mean, for Texas. Central Texas Avengers riding that momentum of the first goal. So still being able to keep that lead to 1 0. There we go. Left wing of Utah going cross court. Blocked. Come center. Oh, oh, good throw by Utah center. Throwing. Throwing the hard roll there to the right side. Ties it up. Good response there by number nine. Also bringing some heat. He told passing into the right wing. Right to the center. Yeah, he eats it up. We had noise dis noise disturbance there on the court. We're gonna have to replay that one. Texas coach telling her to take her time, set up a throw. See what he does with it. Goes down the block by a center, Utah center. Nice. Good job. Blocked by Texas center. That was center to center action. Great idea there. Cross court roll by the center. Oh, ball going down the middle of the court. We got a ball gonna, over. Yeah. So now he just decided to let it go. That ball over just means goes to the other side. Yep. Almost 10 seconds though, right? Or, yeah. Oh, Utah looked a little lost. Locked out for the viewers oh. back home. When you have a ball over situation like that, does the ball have to cross the half court line before 10 seconds or just the high ball line? Uh, the half court line. Good strong throw by Texas. Equipment check over by the officials. It looks like there might be uh, an eye shade check for number four, the center. You hear the Utah coach telling his players Two minutes, 38 seconds left in this first half. Let's see what Utah comes out and does out of this little equipment check. I'm sure yeah. it doesn't come out quick. Here we go, left wing of Texas. You're going to pass it. Give it off to his right wing. See what he does with it. 
Oh, he's going to get the 10 second penalty. Wow. They, I, that was close. It seemed like they called it fast, but, you know, hey. It, didn't seem, it did seem faster. I mean, in the previous game, I thought I felt a couple 10 second penalties. Yeah, that weren't called. And on this yeah. one, they might be overcorrecting for it. But this is a great opportunity for Texas to regain that lead. Yeah. It looks like they picked number six to defend. Mm hmm. Let's see if Texas can line it up. Textbook. Go! He's going to get it through in that corner pocket Co to the left. Great job. Coast to coast, corner to corner. Went from the right side to the left corner, and that's going to cause Utah to call a timeout. Eight. Utah down again for the second time this game, two to one. And color me surprised, Zach. Great cross roll for, uh, for Texas on that penalty shot. Yeah. And the defense is doing their job. Uh, I think impressive way of regrouping. Like you said, Central Texas is a good team. They just played a, a, more better, team. a better team the first time. And maybe that's what uh, got them prepared for this game. I definitely woke them up. Woke them up, yeah. If they didn't have their coffee, they definitely... They, they had it up. now, yeah, yeah. You know, Utah's going to try to come out of this uh, this timeout, try to set up a Seems shot. A trick play, maybe, here. See what they do. Left wing goes down the line. Wow, Blocked. good teamwork there. The center sniffed that out. Nine, just throwing hammers over there. Yeah, this little center to center action there, yeah. blocked out. So he blocked it out, it rolled out, so a few seconds went off the clock. Mm -hmm. about, oh, and he's quick with it, and smart. Ooh. Living on the edge there. Substitution called by Round Rock, Central Texas. Texas All right, sub. nine's gonna go out for his brother, number five. It must be Javier and Nimi. Co Utah coach. I know is it Javier or Xavier? So there's an Xavier and a Javier. Oh, okay. Well, number nine is going out. He has, oh, he's noticed he was wearing a watch. Is that allowed in the games? I guess so. Is it, do you check it to? Um, what happened here? Is it because of the watch? No, no, you. So when you make subs, you have to wait until you get eye checked in the in your bench box. Oh, you gotta. And it was the same thing that we did. Yeah, and yeah. And so they're gonna pick. They're gonna pick the Round Rock's uh, youngest defender or youngest player, Nemi. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? He's got some athleticism. I think he might be able to do it here. Let's see if he can block it. Utah, big chance to tie it up. Goal, Goal, Utah ties it up. I mean, he was there. It's just too much pepper behind it. Yeah, I, I heard. Uh, I heard Nemi get a piece of it. Yeah. All right, tie game. Oh, two costly, minutes, thirty seconds left in the half. Costly minute. penalty for Texas. Nemi with the spin throw. I like that. He's the yeah. only player doing it right now. He's been. Uh, he's been practicing that on pra in practice. Yeah. You know, smaller players, so he's able to get. A little more, uh, a little more power behind it. Yeah, lower to the ground, good uh, center of gravity. Blocked out. And you gotta wonder if Utah, relying so much on the center for their offense and defense, if that's gonna catch up to them. I'm sure throughout the day it might. Center blocking it again. No, he's he's going to pass it off to his right wing. Yeah. Put his arm on some ice. Oh, down the line. Blocked. Well done. Nice block by the Texas center. Center, center action. Yep.
minute 20 left in the first half. Score tied up at two. Oh, oh Utah's wow. going to get through for the goal. That was just a laser in the right corner. Center Oof. really taking uh, that leadership role. You know, uh, I, telling them let's focus on some defense now that they have the lead. Yeah, that was that was impressive. That might have been one of the fastest rolls in the game. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah, it has some heat behind it. Surprised Oof. the fire alarm didn't go off. I know. Well, if that if that roll had been in a uh, Round Rock, it would have gotten three speeding tickets. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> a little Round Rock shout out there to our Central Texas Adventures. A little neighbors uh, up north. Neighbors up north, yeah. <laughs> The Canada of Austin, Round Rock. Looks Let's like, uh, yeah, looks like Utah is rejuvenated by that goal. And they're trying oh, yeah. to ride out this first half on that moment. momentum. Let's see what, uh, let's see minute what 16 uh, left. Let's see what they do with the rock, with the rock here. Block by the center. He's going to throw. Sneak in oh, down the line. That, that ball was hugging the line. Whoa. Oh. Brian took one in the shins there. Four to two. Yeah, well, Brian Maffitt is known for his strong shins. <laughs> Twenty-eight seconds left in the half. A good throw by Texas cross court. You know, Utah has definitely buckled down on their defense after those uh, early goals. Dangerously close to ten seconds. Speaking of ten seconds, there's only ten of those left in the half. Almost sneaked over the right side. Two seconds left. Well, that's gonna be halftime. <laughs> That'll do it. All right. Got a little break here for the halftime. Hopefully, Brian gets some uh, ice on those shins. For sure. Yeah. Well, it's what's the score at the end of the half here? Stan? Four to two, Utah over the Avengers, and I'm surprised. It looked like a uh, you know early on. It looked like the Central Texas came out with everything they had and built that early 1-0 lead. And then uh, slowly but surely, Utah worked their way back into it, took a lead, and I got scared there at the end that they were going to take over and, you know, start piling up the points. But Central Texas' uh, defense really holding strong. They just need to find that, you know, offensive firepower again. I agree. And then also, the, you know, the penalty helping uh – the Texas team will uh, get those goals coming out strong, but it looks like Utah has settled in and their experience is starting to take over here. Yeah, yeah. Still anyone's game. This is a good one. I like it. We'll be back in uh, two minutes for the start of the second half.
back of the second half. Utah is going to start at center. Looks like number nine is back in for Texas. Oh, okay. That have been we do have a new lineup here. Nine is in the center. Five is in the corner. Both brothers play at the same time. I've rolled out. I bet you that's a good time for them both brothers being able to be on the same court. Yeah, good communication skills. Yeah, they'll have that chemistry. Block by center. Rolled Strong out. Throw. Yeah. If he just keep that in, that's a nice throw. Yeah. Also, Central Texas taking the chance here to rest their center, maybe give them a chance to come back for the last couple minutes of the game. That 10 seconds clock's got to be going. Oh, hit the oh post. My God, so close. So close. Hitting the pole and going out. He needs to go back to that throw at some point. It was right wing for Utah. Block. Right to really the attacking the right side heavy here. Utah is? Utah, uh, Central Texas. Center with that strong throw, but blocked. Yeah. Good we got a timeout here by Utah. A good throw by the center, yeah. Texas. Interest he's interesting strategy here by Central Texas, having the wings move into the center, usually a stronger offensive players. So you sacrifice a little bit on the old defense, but uh, I'm telling you, it's helping. Uh, they hit the post already. They're they're yeah. uh, he, showing the firepower. Yeah, he's getting close. Yeah. He keeps throwing it. It's going to go through. Utah is still playing strong, though. Yeah. Utah maybe letting their center know, hey, they're attacking the right side, maybe. Yeah. They, I mean, that's an early timeout. So yeah. Maybe that coach saw something. I think he's surprised by the lineup change and the change of strategy. Five minutes, 40 seconds still left in the second half. Score remains. Utah four. Oh, oh caught him off guard. Right away. Oh. Got a score change there. Utah five. Round rock two. Seems like once Utah has a lead, they just protect it with defense. They, they don't, um, Texas not being able to score since early in the first half. Mm -hmm. Oh, great roll down the gap, but the center sniffed it out. Texas play a fast paced game, catch and throw, catch and throw every time. Try to catch Utah off guard, but right now that wall of Utah is up. Mm -hmm. The Great Wall of Utah, one of the lesser known Great Walls. Good, good communication by uh, Texas there. Yeah, Texas calling timeout. I would maybe try. Maybe are they going to go with another lineup change here? I'm not sure. Or, Well, I think they might be calling a timeout to set up a throw. Yeah. Try to set up their best thrower and uh, so we can line it up. Yeah. I think Utah's coach telling them to, you know, just to keep the ship afloat. I think in, they got a three-point lead with four minutes 41 left on the clock. It's uh, still anyone's game, but Utah – you know, from their last game, hasn't allowed more than two points in any of their games. So this could be a, this could be like a pattern. Well, I'm gonna throw it right to the center. Best thrower, best defender. Oh, yeah, he's gonna get it in again. It. A bullet down the left line. 
bounced right over the defender. There's nothing he can do to stop that. Oh, and he goes out. Texas is making a sub. The Are they taking out the that wing? That yeah, number five on? is going out, and they're bringing back in their starting uh, center. They're going to try to, yeah. The uh, offensive experiment has backfired a little bit. Allowed two early goals here to Utah in the second half, so they're going to bring down number four, starting center, to try to tighten the ship a bit. Utah showing no signs of fatigue. No, I can't believe it. Center for Utah saying, stay focused. Oh, quick Ooh. throw. Quick oh. throw out of bounds. But he had the right idea. The yeah, idea was there. He sure did. Let's see a big throw by Utah here, left wing. Go cross roll. And blocked out. Utah center, he lines up. Oh, so close, found the gap, yeah, but good, uh, good defense there by number seven. Picking up the slack there for Utah. Oh. All right, both centers there. Good exchange of those by both teams. Just no getting it past oh, number ball. three. Ball goes out of the front, center runs on David, pass it to his right wing. Great teamwork by Utah. Yeah, the great wall still holding up for Utah. The score is still six to two, three minutes, 20 seconds remaining. Straight out of bounds from Central Texas, the ball's back to Utah. Timeout by Utah. We had a little so close. block there by the shoelaces. Utah in a comfortable lead here, six to two with 308 left in the first half. Let's see if uh, the coaches of Round Rock can get their squad together. Utah going to start. The center has the ball. Right down the line for another goal. Utah improves their lead to five. Score seven to two. Three minutes left on the clock. Swept up by the center. Center passing it off to number four. Again, another block by the center. Central Texas is going to have to attack the wings more. Great line roll, but blocked by number four, Central Texas. Just over two minutes left in the first half. Trick play there with Central Texas. The, the center and the right wing switching spots, but didn't work. Oh, good throw.
How much time do they have to be able there to There is a here? minute 25 left, and the score is 7-2. to two. you got to think at this point it might just be too much to overcome. Yeah, you know, too much. Too much. Who Not blocked out on the clock? Yeah. The groundhog just got to pick up the pace here. Yeah. They, they want to get as many throws as they can in. That ball needs to be out right now. Yeah. But yeah, taking the time. Oh, out of bounds again. That's really cost him a lot in the game. I think they've had five throws out of bounds. Like, Utah, another timeout. Surprising. Utah, Utah up in the game, calling a timeout. Uh, but, you know, maybe it's because of that uh, light bench they have. Yeah, light light bench, no bench. You know, yeah. coach sitting over there looking lonely like a senior Yeah, you probably just want somebody to talk to. Yeah, yeah, could be. Feeding the penguins. Yeah. Feeding the penguins. The, pe the pigeons. Pigeons. Yeah, feeding the penguins if, you know, maybe. It is cold in here. Yeah. <laughs> but Utah, man. Uh, you ever fe feed a penguin before at the zoo? You know what, I haven't. No, I haven't yeah. either. It's, it was $5 when I went there in Houston. You know, it's one of those things uh, next time. I, I bargained. I said, you know, maybe three. Yeah. They weren't having it. Three, no, not having it. Let's see if Utah sets up a shot here. I think penguins would make great defenders with the way they can slide on their bellies. Oh, dude. Oh, oh there we block. go. Block. 57 seconds left. Good block by the center. And they just keep attacking the middle, and that's not going to be the way to beat Utah. Yeah, if you're going to go against Utah, you want to attack the lines and go against those wings. Not the, not the strength. Oh, oh and that's going to get the surprising. Goal. Surprising goal there, 8 to 2, 40 seconds left. It didn't seem like it had a lot on it, but it bounced right over. And that was the center again, right? Yeah. Yeah, center again for Utah scoring. And you got to keep it away from that guy. Yeah. There it is. Right there. There, there it is. There we go. And again, nice. tacking the wing, the left wing for Utah. It's been working. 8 to 3, 31 seconds. But again, like I was saying, sometimes for these younger players, uh, accuracy hasn't uh, gotten there yet. Yeah. So it's hard to aim for those spots sometimes. It's, it is, it is. But if they can get that down, let's see if he can go down the line here. If he does, centers all over it. Yeah. 15 seconds left. This could be the last throw. It looks like Ron Walker get one yeah, more throw. Yeah, they can one, hurry. One chance here. Oh, high ball. Oh, jeez. Let's see if they declined it. Is it? They're not declining. Oh, they are not going to decline. They want to put yeah. it on them. Put it on them. It's gold differential. Oh, they're declining it. They must oh, have heard okay. you. The sportsmanship. Decline the penalty here with the obvious clear, clear victory in this one. Five seconds left. I think it's just a hold it out kind of scenario yeah, here. For sure. I see you try to sling it down the court here. <laughs> And yeah, it looks like that's, yeah, that's they're all she the wrote. Last, uh, eight at the end of this one, game four, eight to three, Utah over Central Texas. Yeah, Utah, uh, you know, starting slow, but after that uh, slow start, they pretty much dominated the rest of the game. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame. I mean, uh, the first, you know, out of the first three uh, lead changes, Two of them belong to Central Texas, so it was their game. But just in the end, experience, you know, yep. and that consistency, that'll always overtake, uh, you know, these kind of like um, good, not good luck streaks, but kind of like high energy streaks yeah, these, these where they came out firing. Starts. Yeah, strong starts. Came out firing, but at the end, the consistency was there. And I got, you know, hats off to Utah. They just kept their cool the whole way through. And uh, they did. Also very impressive effort by Central Texas. I think they tried some new things and the defense really picked up. The offense is there. I think uh, the next team that plays them better watch out because uh, they're they ready. keep getting better and better. I'm telling you, I want to see the Central Texas play Mississippi. That'll be a good game. Uh -huh. who, we, who we got next? We got next is we're going to have our first look here at the home team on the guy's side, Texas Wildcats versus the Florida Cobras. So. Oh. No easy start for the Texas Wildcats, but you know, you never know. Yeah, there, we are going to see some firepower that we haven't seen before, and uh, it's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be great. All right, we'll be back with you in about 10 minutes for that game.
John Montes. Number five, Tristan Brennan. And number six, Aitani Stone. Number seven, Keegan Hacker. Number eight, Jose Guillaume Bridges. And their coaches, Keith Young. So best seat in the house. <laughs> is, that, is that from Honest Mary's? It's the Bistro. Oh, the Bistro? Really? Yeah. Wow. Here we got game number five going between the uh, Florida Cobras on the left hand side versus Texas Wildcats. It's the Texas players. They do have some heat. Yeah. Pedro blocking it in the center, passing it off to Mark on the right hand side. Ooh, what's cool fast roll? I think all three of these Texas players first time playing. That's right. Except for maybe Mark. I think Mark might play. Right wing attacking that line. What a roll. These. Oh. Look out on the sidelines there. Number seven. Throwing hammers. Well, the, the Flor Florida coach has picked up his coaching for sure. Nice throw. Blocked out to the right side. It's a lot of ricochets in this game already. Here comes their strong thrower, Florida. Oh, and that's going to get through. Yeah, right past Darius in the right corner. That's all right. Darius brings some heat himself. His chance to answer here. a shame. High ball had some heat on it, but early mistake there, but it's okay. Scores one to zero, Florida. Darius to defend. So you, you can't do the, you can't have penalties against these really good teams. Yeah. Ooh, there was no stopping that one, two to zero. Florida number three with his second goal of the game. 